Hi, I'm Diane Neubauer, or Du Yanzi for my Chinese name. I'm going to show you in this video how to make this video. It's, I'm calling these read along videos. They are something I designed as a follow up step to face to face online tutoring. I say face to face because we're all seeing each other on video. Um, and it hasn't turned out to be as effective a use of time to focus on reading in that group. Um, very interactive time that we usually have each week. Um, but people were interested in being able to read characters. And I, I thought trying out uh, kind of a read-along approach might be effective. And we've been testing it, and it sounds like it's working pretty well. I use cold character reading when I have face-to-face -face classes developed by Terry Waltz. Um, I love that because it does not require memorizing characters, um, but through lots and lots of exposure to comprehensible reading material, um, the students begin to recognize those characters in new contexts through the process of seeing it and hearing it connected to the, the language that they already really know well by sound. So they know the sound and the meaning. So I'll show some of the features of the YouTube video play, but before I get into that, first, we would want to have some reading material. So I here have just a Google Docs open. Uh, my first step was to write it and then edit it a little bit. I put spaces between the words. Chinese doesn't usually, but it helps to give beginners some visual context for where the words start and stop. So um, you notice right here, I have a hit the enter key. So, and here's another one. So every place I've hit the enter key is the end of a slide in quick slides. So we'll see how that looks. Here's their sample. Um, to get to the editing window, it's right there. Little tiny pencil or pen to save it so that you can have a unique URL that you can return to and edit again in the future if you want, that's that. Uh, this part selects the color of the background and then the other things, the features here, and the fonts really don't apply to me because I'm not using an alphabet. So I get rid of the sample message and I paste in the reading that I've prepared in advance and I click submit and that's it. If I had used PowerPoint to do all of that and copy and paste in each line of the text, it would have taken a lot more time. The other thing I like about this is that the font is usually nice and big they vary it a little bit so each slide automatically gives you sometimes a little different font size and different lines that's all automatic in quick slides one small tip if you have a number on your slide somehow it's often been that that the number turns out huge and then the sentence after it is this little tiny thing hard to read at the bottom what i found to correct that is either put the number at the end of the sentence if you need that number there like it's line number three and you for some reason want to show that or don't put any space between the number and the first word in the sentence and then it spaces it out okay so we've got our little quick slides thing then i would come over to screencast-o-matic i hear that on a mac doceri can do this for you or maybe no on ipad doceri can do this on a mac People are using other things. Um, I've been using Screencast-O-Matic because I'm used to it. I like it. Um, it's cheap. It's free to make videos up to 15 minutes in length. Um, I've bought a subscription for $15 per year, um, and then I can have unlimited recording time and some space to store recordings on their site. Um, and in fact, I'm going to share the link to if you think you want to get a copy of this program, I can get a little kickback by having you use my link. Um, so it's it's been fairly easy. I click the Start Recorder. I've already got it started because I'm making a video right now. Uh, but you'd see a little window. You can select to record the screen, to record what's on the webcam, or both simultaneously. So after that has been made, you can go over and upload it to YouTube. This is one I uploaded last week. So um, a couple things to note in here. There are a lot of features in YouTube videos. I tend to keep it simple. Um, but there is one thing that's well worth noticing. And that is if you decide to do this and you don't want everybody in the world to access this video, there's a few options. So you can make it unlisted. That would mean people can 
can access the video as long as they know the link. They won't be able to search for it in YouTube. Public would allow you both to search for it and they might even list it as a recommendation for people who are looking up things that are similar. Um, private means that no one can access that video except those that you have sent specific invitations to. Only through their email address then can they access it. Um, so occasionally it's been a problem where if I set it at private, someone doesn't have their email address connected to their YouTube channel. Uh, so you want to check and make sure that it works. Um, this one is unlisted. So nothing particularly proprietary in here. I made the reading, so it's all good to go. Um, and then um, the other thing to note is you may think, well, I have to get a YouTube channel. How do you do that? If you ever have watched a YouTube video, I think they require you to use an email address. So that's what I have up here. Um, so I am in what they call the Creator Studio. So, and then I went over here to upload. So let's imagine we've got all that uploaded. How does someone use this read-along video? Let's play one. So I have it uh, unmuted, so the sound is on, and I'm going to play it at a slower speed than my natural pace. When I'm making the reading video, I try to speak a little slower than natural speed, um, but I haven't been too concerned about being extremely slow because there's all these nice speed features within YouTube. Let's say somebody is really great at Chinese reading and they want, maybe they've listened to it you know, three months ago and then they went back last week and they're thinking, let's see if I can do it at a real fast speed. They could. Um, but the first time through, I would say 0.5 or 0.75. The problem with 0.25 is that the sound is off at that point. So you won't hear any of the audio at all. 0.5 is pretty slow. 0.75 is pretty pretty good pace, I think, for, for a beginner who's following along. Yeah. Um, the other nice thing is, of course, you could pause. Let's say they got to the end of this sentence and they wanted to wait, wait a minute, let me think about that. What did that mean? You can. Let's say you want to go back. Click the left arrow. It went back five seconds. And because Screencast-O-Matic has this nice feature where it shows you where the cursor is very obviously, you know when you got to the beginning of the slide. So you can play it again. Let's say I'm going to mute it though. I want to see if I can read along with it. And here's where when it's muted you might want it at 0.25 speed so that you can really bring it slower and feel like you're reading at a comfortable pace. So uh, those are the basic features and I think I've hit most of the reasons why I'm making these and how they work. Please post any comments if you have questions. Thanks!